I think for investors' focus at the moment, just as we bring to get the close the first half of the year, is looking ahead, what do we think the next six months entail? The focus for investors, I think, in the second half of the year is getting the direction of the dollar correct. That's going to be the big call. It's been hurting on the international front. We think in the next few months we'll see peak U.S. economic growth. The dollar starts to roll over. Now's a great opportunity to be looking to get into some of the international equities that have been so beaten up in the first half of this year. Uh, uh, not, not underweighting U.S., not, under, not underweighting U.S. I think it's more of a story of selectivity. I think we're in relatively neutral tech. We see some opportunities in financials. We see some opportunities potentially in energy that does very well in the late cycle stages of an economic expansion. Brian, um, the setup right now where we've had this decline over the last couple of weeks in the U.S. markets, you've had Treasury yields come back in, uh, market goes back to the lower end of its trading range. It feels a little bit like March, the end of the first quarter, and then we had some relief into April as we got focused on corporate fundamentals. Make any sense to feel like that might be a playbook? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we're dealing with a little bit of policy uncertainty, which obviously causes some volatility in markets. Um, you know, policy uncertainty with regards to the Federal Reserve and, of course, with regards to trade policy. So the economy looks reasonably strong. There's a lot of stimulus coming in. But um, I agree the U.S. economy is going to moderate. You're seeing that in yields. Real yields are coming down in the United States. So I think that as the U.S. slows because of a stronger dollar, um, as the, some of the, the sugar rush from the stimulus starts to fade, you'll actually start to see some of that policy uncertainty go away. I think the Fed's going to have to be more cautious than they currently expect. I think the administration will take will walk back some of this overly aggressive trade rhetoric. So I think it comes down to corporate earnings and policy. And, and mm. from that perspective, I think the this cycle continues. I think the Fed is a big question mark at this point. And Alex, I mean, we haven't talked about it very much, but the personal consumption expenditures price index, the PCE, which the Fed looks at to determine inflation, is now at a six-year high in May, jumping to 2.3 percent. Yes. Is the Fed really going to be able to slow down its rate hikes with inflation posting these kind of gains? Uh, agreed. I think that the, it's going to be a challenge for the Fed to slow down. And the other thing to think about is that the full benefit from the tax bill that was passed last year is still filtering through the system. We've, not, we've only seen about $200 billion of the $2.7 trillion that we think locked, is locked up overseas come back to the U.S. We've yet to see the capex pick up that we're, we're expecting. All of this, when it filters through the system, pours more, more fuel on the fire of the U.S. economy. That pushes the Fed to potentially go two more times this year, and we think maybe three to four times next year as so well, I, so really I disagree. tightening up the Fed, Federal Reserve. I disagree with that. I actually think that a lot of that money, a lot of that stimulus is going to find its way overseas. We saw that in 2003 with the George W. Bush tax cut where we saw the current account surpluses of the emerging markets go up significantly. We did not see significant inflation in the United States except in the housing market. So what ends up happening is a lot of this stimulus, we go out and we consume, businesses consume, consumers consume. We consume from the emerging markets, big increases in their current account surpluses. That money gets invested back in the United States, in U.S. Treasuries, stabilizes the dollar, not a lot of inflation. Fed can back off. Good time for emerging markets, reasonably good time for the United States. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.